Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. Have you ever felt that no matter how hard you try, you never quite seem to get where it is that you want to go? It might be in work, it might be in relationships, it might be with your health or your fitness or something like that. Um, I decided to do this little video today because that's been something that has been, I think, one of my greatest challenges in life. I, I've always been somebody who likes to do something and do it really, really well. Right down to when I did my pony club, my very first pony club camp, and I won all the rosettes. <laughs> and it wasn't like they were all for doing like amazing things. They were for simple things like making sure that your pony is groomed well. I would get there before everybody else and I would spend hours <laughs> grooming my pony to make sure that it was spotless. And it was never through trying to be better than other people. It was always through trying to make sure that I did my best. And whilst it has served me in some ways, it hasn't served me in others. Um, in the Pony Club camp, for instance, I didn't actually get first place on the last day and the organisers actually told me that they felt so embarrassed because they'd given me first place throughout the weekend that um, they felt like they really needed to give someone else a chance. <laughs> um, we also did... I think it was, no actually it was before, when I was only about six, we did a sponsored walk around a school, it was a different school to where I was going when I did the pony club, and I was just loving doing the walk, talking to the people and chatting and going round and round and round, um, and apparently I was in the lead, and I don't think I even really knew I was in the lead, but my mum was a teacher at the school, and through embarrassment of having me be the first person to win the, the sponsored walk and do the most laps, um, she actually told another kid to go around a couple of times and that he would beat me if he did so. So doing my best hasn't always given me the results that I wanted. And as I've got older and wiser, hopefully, uh, through life, I've also realised that quite often putting that kind of effort in, trying to get results through trying hard, is something that is absolutely exhausting especially when life fills up. You know, when you've got children and you've got a career and you've got a social life and you've got a relationship and all of those things. You know, before when you're a young kid and you're a teenager and you're early 20s, there's only really you to look after. But when you've got all of that, doing your best in all of those areas is absolutely exhausting. <laughs> and I found it to be something that is not quite attainable. So what I'm going to share with you today is that whilst my propensity is to come from a place of trying really, really hard, I've learnt that balance of both allowing and doing um, achieves the best results. And specifically, your doing needs to come from a place of inspiration. And, and I'm, I'll go into inspiration next week. I'll do a video on how to create the right space for inspiration next week, because that's most likely a 10 minute talk all on its own. But when you actually give space for inspiration to come, and then the action flows from that, there's very little efforting that takes place, and the results can be completely profound. Um, for instance, when I started my coaching business, after I'd been going a year or so, I wanted to break into the corporate world. And I, I just had the idea that that was what I wanted to do. I didn't really know what action I needed to take, um, and I was inspired to make time to go to my son's sports day. And it was actually while I was at his sports day that I met a, few, a fellow parent who happened to run an international company. And um, they were, they'd actually taken over from another business, so they were having challenges with the takeover and the personnel, um, and said that I was exactly what he was looking for. Um, and that started up a wonderful relationship, a working relationship that lasted num numerous years and meant that I worked with him and his organisation for quite a long time. But that took no effort whatsoever. All it took was me showing up at my son's sports day. Now, the reason that I say that trying too hard is not a good plan is one, it's exhausting. But second of all, it creates an immense amount of stress in the body. 
Um, over the last four years, um, we've moved four times in those four years and we've had numerous other things that have been going on that have caused me a lot more stress than I'm normally used to. And as I said, I tend to sort of put my all into something. Um, and I've always been incredibly fit and healthy. Um, I've always been very active and I had very high expectations of what I should be capable of doing. But because of my stress and because I hadn't been exercising as much as I, I normally would do because I had other things on my plate, when I did start exercising, I expected myself to be able to do what I used to be able to do. And so I pushed myself much harder than I ever would have done before. And all of this culminated in me ending up with um, exercise-induced asthma which when I read up about it and found out about it, is brought on when somebody is stressed and they stress their body <laughs> even further. <laughs> so I think putting in too much effort to get somewhere and pushing yourself so incredibly hard is detrimental to yourself and where you're wanting to go. And if you think about it in an energy way, that... To make an effort, you have to have the reserves to actually to do the thing that you want to do. If you're constantly exerting effort and you're not replenishing, then there are no reserves to be able to make the effort with. And then you're running on empty. Um, and that's when a lot of people have breakdowns, both mentally, physically, however it is that it happens in life. And that's why I think it's so incredibly important to have this balance, this doing and this allowing. And allowing, uh, I remember somebody once explained it to me, it's like trying to catch a bar of soap in the shower. If you go and grab at it constantly, and for those of you who nowadays with shower gel don't often have soap, get a bar of soap and try and chase it around a bathtub when it's wet. It's very, very tricky. <laughs> the more you grab at it and, and sort of, you know, attack it, the more it slips out of your hands and shoots away. There's a way of going reaching for it and scooping it up that almost allows it to fall into your hand. Um, and life is a little bit like that. We do need to take action, but as I've said, the action needs to come from inspiration. We need to be inspired to take the action that we take. And for that, we need to be able to allow space and allow peace and quiet and allow ourselves to connect with source. So I would like to put it to you that there's two ways to achieve anything. There is hard work and effort, and I think in our society that's how we're brought up, because everything that we do is all about action and doing. You know, we go to school and we have to learn and, and revise and, you know, produce essays and produce experiments, and, you know, we have to constantly be doing. We're never encouraged just to sit there and daydream and to allow inspiration to come to us and then to take action from that. We're also taught that other people have the answers. So our parents tell us what to do, our teachers tell us what to do, we go to work and our bosses tell us what to do. So our culture, our society is one of always having to do something to keep other people happy. And that's the one way of living. And I don't know many people that have got what we truly seek in life, which is bliss fulfillment, deep, deep gratitude, peace and love from that kind of way of living. So my suggestion is that we start to balance that. And the way to balance that is to start building allowing space into your life. And that allowing space is time when you connect and you do things that really, really inspire you. Um, it could be meditating, it could be going for a walk, it could be exercising on your own. And I say on your own because when you're with other people, there's no sense of allowing. There's no space for that allowing to happen and, and to, to come. And something you might find is that in a way to avoid constantly having this expectation of doing, that you might do things to, to numb yourself. And they could be anything, from watching too much TV, to reading too many novels, to eating too much. And I would like to suggest that part of the reason that we do these things is because we're uncomfortable just sitting and being. We've daydreaming and um, pondering and being in that kind of open, present space has been made wrong in the world. And we're not comfortable just sitting with ourselves. 
because we've been, it's been so ingrained with us that we have to be doing things. And yet when I think of the most amazingly creative people that have had sort of huge breakthroughs, people like Albert Einstein, Leonardo da Vinci, and people like that, they were known to have these moments of reflection. Albert Einstein had these thought experiments that he used to conduct. He also used to play the violin, which I really deeply believe was a space that he learned to disassociate and just be present with himself in, in the moment. And I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't get his greatest insights in those moments of complete presence and being. So what I would like to share with you in a very roundabout way this week is that I don't believe that hard work and effort ever really got you what you truly want. I think hard work and effort is normally, we normally resort to hard work and effort because we think that's what we should be doing, not because what we really want to be doing. And that if we actually create space in our lives, space to be, to be truly present with ourselves, that we'll learn to listen to ourselves. And when we become inspired, then our actions and the guidance that we get in life will be so much more profound and that the space between what we want to do and achieving it will reduce so phenomenally that we can't believe how easy life can really truly be. I don't profess to say that I've mastered this, but I've seen it so often in my life that I know that it's really, really true. As I said, my, my wiring is to try too hard. <laughs> so this is something that I am very, very familiar with. And it's something that I'm constantly learning. And I've been listening to a lot of um, Esther Hicks, uh, or Jerry Hicks, or Abraham Hicks even, recently. And one of the things that I really love that they say is that your soul, your source, knows everything that you're wanting to achieve. And if only you would relax and enjoy life, it would unfold so much easier. So the thing I'm focusing on the moment is relief. Um, because if I could let go of all the things that I think I need to do and should do and have to, have to do, there would be such a sense of relief. And in focusing on relief, I feel that my vibration rises. And once I've focused on relief, then I can focus on gratitude. And then I can focus on joy and bliss. Um, and bliss is the most natural state for us all to be in. If we let go of all the shoulds, shouldn'ts, must, mustn'ts, and all of the noise in our heads, what we're left with is bliss. I hope in my very roundabout way, you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please like, subscribe and share, because that really helps me to get my messages out there. I have loads and loads of resources, and if you're interested, you can find them on my website, www.britannia.com, B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y-A.com. I also have a free course which you're welcome to subscribe to um, and it's all about the evolution of self and there's five tips or five, you get a tip a day that helps you to understand life and to start working and living in the flow. So much love from me to you. Bye bye.